Hello lovely people, this is me, Al. I'm the author of How to Remove Trauma Response. And one of the things that I've noticed when I talk about trauma removal is it often brings up a lot of quite understandable skepticism. So people say, you know, how can you possibly remove trauma? You know, where does it go? And this is um, outlandish. And one of the reasons for making this video today is just to underscore really that what this actually is, is not something which is just, you know, some kind of theory off the top of somebody's head or some kind of fast talking. It's really, really solid, robust, replicated neuroscience. So it might be the first time that you're hearing about this reality of trauma removal. And yet it's 26 years old now, now that we're in this particular year. It was, um, it was first discovered in 1997 and it's been replicated over 30 times since. And the process, it's just a mechanism within the brain that we all have, and even animals have it for that matter, and it's called memory reconsolidation. And what it does is it overwrites our implicit memories, not our story memories. We still remember um, what happened to us, but our kind of physiological responses, our nervous system responses, the meaning we attach to it, that is kind of neutralized. And so, as I say, even though it's really understandable that there's some skepticism when you first encounter this, in this video, I just want to make clear that this is something that's over a quarter of a century old. And rarely people who help other people get over psychological blocks or even get over big T trauma. It's something we really need to know about. And it's not being taught anywhere near widely enough, which is why I'm really keen to spread the word on it. I found out about it purely by accident. Um, and I don't want other people to find out about, about it by accident because it's just too important. So if you're feeling some sort of skepticism, I'd say good, because that's a sign of a, a, a nice inquiring mind. But I'd also invite you to kind of look into this. It's called memory reconsolidation. There's work out there which talks about it. My book, How to Remove Trauma Response, is a nice, accessible way of getting into it. But when you look into it, you'll realize that this has been replicated over 30 times. <clears throat> now, with any scientific discovery, I put discovery in there because what often happens in science is there's something called replication failure. And with replication failure, it means that you do an experiment, you think, oh, brilliant, we've just discovered something. But then when you do the experiment again, you get a completely different conclusion. And so it's really important to always notice parts of science and neuroscience which are replicated, especially those which are replicated over and over and over again, as memory consolidation has been. So it's as robust a neuroscience as a robuster finding of neuroscience as you can really imagine, I guess. Now, the second question that comes from this is that once people realize that this is just established um, neuroscience and that it's not some sort of um, theory that I and others have come up with off the top of our heads, but something which has been genuinely tested um, in the neuroscience world. The next thing that comes up is like, ah, OK, so it is real. Um, it has been replicated many times. It, it has been in existence for over a quarter of a century, even though it's still um, unfortunately under the radar. But if it comes from neuroscience, it's going to be quite, uh, it's going to be quite complicated, isn't it? It's going to be quite a complex thing. Like, okay, it might exist, but how do we, as people who help other people, actually implement it? And so I just want to talk about that very briefly because, let me just add this on here. Even though neuroscience is complicated, the things that neuroscientists discover are not necessarily complicated. So the thing I always try and get across to people here is that memory reconsolidation, that mechanism which we're all born with, which is uh, we all come with this ability and capability of removing our trauma. 
memory reconsolidation just needs three things that the brain needs to trigger that. So I'm just going to give you the basic formula. Whoops, my little uh, device is being a bit silly there. So let's just plug it back in and I'll undo that and I'll give you the formula. Okay, so the basic formula that the brain needs is activation of the old, if you like. So that might be the old trauma, the old trauma response, the old set of meanings with a mismatch. And I'll talk about this sort of stuff in later videos. But basically, we need a mismatch experience that disconfirms this. In other words, what the brain needs is to take the prediction that comes from the traumatic event, because we take learnings from that, we make meaning of that, which may no longer be true, and we provide an experience that gives a prediction error. And then we repeat this process. So what happens here is that the brain pathway gets opened up for rewrite. And then when you repeat, what happens is that the override takes place and the trauma is removed. So even though this comes from neuroscience and even though this is what the neuroscientists are telling us, you can say it's not particularly rocket science in terms of what we might do in the room with a person. We connect to the old prediction, the old trauma response, the activation of that old trauma response, and we provide a mismatch experience that produces a prediction error. Now, there's lots and lots of ways in which you can, first of all, find out what the prediction is. Second of all, generate some sort of prediction error experience. There's lots and lots of ways of doing that, as I've spoken about on these videos before. And you'll find some of them within this book here, how to remove trauma response. Um, but ultimately, that's what you're doing. And so the idea that this has come from neuroscience, it must be horribly complicated. In actual fact, this is really pretty straightforward stuff. It's simple. It might not always be easy, but it's certainly simple. And so that's all I really wanted to say today. Uh, in this particular video. So I'll just remove that for a moment. First of all, this is real. It comes from neuroscience. It's very established, robust, replicated neuroscience. It's been known now for over a quarter of a century. So I'm in this space spreading the word about it because I think it should be more widely known uh, amongst people like ourselves and also people who are struggling with trauma today to know that actually yeah, you can go beyond trauma management and simply remove it. And the second thing I wanted you to know is not to be intimidated by the fact that it's come from neuroscience, because it really is pretty straightforward what the brain needs. And the neuroscientists have made it really clear that what we really need is to take that old prediction from the traumatic event and have an experience that for the nervous system and for the brain produces a prediction error. And then we basically repeat that prediction followed by prediction error. And it's that repetition that overrides the trauma. The end result is that we remember what happened to us, but we no longer have that response getting in our way. So I hope that's useful. Feel free to put your questions and comments underneath the video. And I'll see you soon.